Good morning, this is Tehmina Khan, TK. Today I will explain the concept of O-level mathematics topic, uh, probability. And as you can see on the top, I have written down my blog address and my Gmail address. If you want to contact, you can contact on this Gmail address and the blog address is the link of all my previous videos. Okay, so coming back to probability topic, according to the CIE syllabus, CAIE, um, there are three concepts which are stated here. What is single event, probability of a single event, relative frequency, and simple combined event by using possibility diagram and tree diagram. We need to know. So let's start. What is a probability? So we all know probability is basically chance of happening certain thing. In English, when we're talking about probability, seeing the condition, we talk about it. But in maths, when we're talking about probability, it is a numerical measure. Okay, what are the chances of something to happen? Now, what do we mean by event? Uh, I'll explain you a few terminologies in a while, which are used in probability topic. So then we will know. So basically here you can understand that probability is a numerical measure of the likelihood or chances that an event will occur. So like everything has a notation like plus minus. Similarly, the probability also has a notation and it is written as P of E is equals to M over N. Now what is M and what is N? I let you know because probability is mentioned in either fraction form, percentage form or decimal form. So in a while I'll tell you what is M over N. So let's see the meaning of few terms which we will use in this topic probability. Number first is experiment. So when we are talking about experiment it means we are talking about any process or operation and we will talk about the result of that operation which will be outcomes. For example, tossing a coin is my one uh, operation or my one process and tossing a die is my another process. So these are my process. So this is my experiment and the result of it will be my outcome. So what is a sample space? The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So if you are tossing a coin one time, how many outcomes you can get? Very good. So you can get two outcomes, head and tail, right? So there are total two outcomes. So let's see another example. If I toss a coin um, two times, and then I record the result, I note down the result. So what are the outcomes I can get? So sample space is the total outcomes you can get in any experiment. So here I have written in the set form, if I'm tossing a coin, I will get head head, head tail, tail head or tail tail. There's no other possibility. So these are, these are the outcomes which I can get if I toss a coin two times. So this is called sample space. So next term is event. So a particular collection of possible outcomes from a sample space. Now what does it mean? In the previous example we have seen four outcomes right when we were tossing a coin twice. So the example if I am talking about what is the probability of getting two heads if I toss a coin. So this is called an event. If I say, what is the probability of getting at least one head? So this is also one of the outcome out of the total. So basically a particular outcome you're talking about from a sample space. So outcome we have just used quite a number of times. So it is basically a result of an experiment. Okay, so now let's see where, when we are talking about probability there are two probabilities there are more but we are talking about two here theoretical probability now probability of e is equals to number of favorable outcome divided by total number of outcome 
um, I just showed you that in the notation heading probability of e equals to m over n. So in the denominator we write total number of outcomes which is called sample space and this is how we write number of sample space. Number of favorable outcome mean the event you are talking about. So this is right this is written as number of event. So theor theoretical probability is this thing for example this is the notation for the probability. So what is theoretical probability example if I talk about if I talk about probability of head when I am tossing a coin so there are two outcomes total head or tail so in the denominator I will write two and the in in the numerator I will write one so this is my favorable outcome or this is the event I am talking about so my event is head probability of head and two is the total outcome if you are tossing a coin now we have just seen theoretical probability now we will see experimental or empirical probability which is also called relative frequency so the notation will remain same that is probability of event is equal to number of times event will occur number of times experiment was performed so the headings are same here total sample space and here the number of time the event will occur now we will take or we will see the example of this in a while but see here uh, when you perform an experiment large number of time maybe 100 times 200 times then your answer of the probability for a particular event will be will approximately equals to the theoretical probability for example if you toss um, if you throw a dice for example if you throw a dice 10 times and you want to see how many times you get uh, 2 on it so you may not get probability 1 over 6 because the probability of getting 2 theoretically is 1 over 6 because there are total 6 sides or 6 faces on die and 2 is on one of the face but if you do it large number of time if you have free time please do so <laughs> and uh, you will see maybe 500 times 1000 times throw a dice and keep counting how many times you get to and you will see as you will increase the number of throws the probability will go closer to 1 over 6 so always remember experimental probability for small values may be different from the theoretical value but when you will do it large number of time it will tend to uh, be closer and closer to the theoretical probability of the event now see here for example flipping a coin a spinner rolling a die so you can try all this if you want so I have taken a one example here a different one 50 people were asked how do they get um, how do they go to work 25 used a car 15 took a public transport 10 used a bicycle so if I want to write down the relative frequency I will write car 25 out of 50 bicycle 10 out of 50 public transport 15 out of 50 so these are relative frequencies now we will see the properties of probabilities so mathematically numerically when you find out the probability it all it always uh, fall between 0 and 1 inclusive so that is probability of the event will be less than or equals to 1 and greater than or equals to 0 now what is the meaning of 0 and 1 probability the probability of an impossible event is 0 and the probability of certain event is 1 so for example if I explain here that in a bag if there are red and white balls I am not going into the detail of how many but if there are red and white balls and I ask you what is the probability of drawing a black ball so what will you say zero because black ball is not there so the probability will be zero but if I say what is the probability of drawing a red or what did I say initially white okay suppose white so cert 
the probability is uh, the draw is certain because there are two colors ball and if i'm asking what is the probability of drawing one of those color you will say 100% because definitely one of the ball will come out will be of that color so let's see an example here rolling a fair die what is the probability of each event the number 3 is rolled so probability is 1 over 6 why because on um, out of 6 faces on one face there is 3 so probability is 1 over 6 what is the probability of 9 is rolled 0 because on a die there is no side have a number 9 and if I say what is the probability of greater than 0 and less than 7 so definitely I am giving you condition which is definitely be on one of the face so probability is 6 over 6 which is 1 so 100 percent probability that you will get a number which is between 0 and 7 now we will see what is probability of a complement or complementary event so first of all we will see the notation notation of complementary event is this we just write a small uh, dash which is also called prime on e whatever the event we are talking about so what does it mean the probability that an event will not occur is equal to 1 minus the probability that it will occur so probability of complement not e mean complement is equals to 1 minus probability of event so we will see the example in a while okay, what does it mean because 1 is 100 percent probability and here i am talking about any event so if i know the probability of it and minus from 1 the remaining is which cannot happen in that case so let's see an example Find the probability of not getting a jack or king from a pack of cards. But for that you need to have a knowledge of a um, pack of cards that there are uh, four types and two of red colors and two of black colors. And each has one jack, one king and one queen. So all together in a pack of cards there are four jack and four king. So I am asking you the probability of not getting a jack or king so i know the probability of getting a jack or king will be 8 out of 52 because there are total 52 cards right so which if i simplify will be equals to 2 over 13 i'm repeating i know in a card pack of cards there are four jacks and four kings so altogether there are eight so if i know what is the probability of drawing them and if I minus it from 1, I will get the probability of not getting them. You can do it directly also, but I am telling you this is one of the way. So the probability of getting a jack or king is 8 over 52. Hence, the probability of not getting a jack or king will be 1 minus 2 over 13, which will be 11 over 13. So this is a complementary event. So if you add up a complementary event and the event, the sum will be equal to 1. So you can understand that from here. Now we will see a new, uh, another uh, term which is called mutually exclusive event and addition of probability. So right now we are seeing little, little um, examples to understand each concept. And then in a while we will see complicated example to understand how it is applied okay so mutually exclusive event so first of all we need to understand the meaning of this word mutually exclusive events are things that cannot happen at the same time so it makes sense but what does it mean let's see so can you run backward and forward at the same time no so if I say uh, running backward is your one event and running forward is your another event so these two events cannot happen at the same time it means these two events are mutually, uh, mutually exclusive event 
Another example of a mutually exclusive event is you cannot toss a coin and get both a head and a tail. So if you are calling um, tossing a head or tossing a tail and giving them names suppose event A and event B. So these two events A and B will be mutually exclusive event because they cannot happen at the same time. Hence mutually exclusive event cannot occur simultaneously. So therefore if event A and B are mutually exclusive then we can say k probability of A or B is equals to sum of those two probabilities that what are the chances of happening either this or this. So basically we will add up and at times teacher says k when or comes you add up. So this is just one way of cramming the concept but if you understand so basically what we are saying k this occur or this occur. So that's why we add up the probability. So in the previous example when we were talking about probability of a jack or a king so we were adding up because there were four jacks in a pack of card and four kings in pack of card so we were adding them 8 out of 52 let's see another example what is the probability of a 2 or an odd number being rolled on a fair die so you know okay, it is just not possible that you get an odd number or two at the same time. So these are mutually exclusive event, right? So probability of two or odd number, we can add up separately. So probability of two is one over six because out of six side on one side two is written and probability of odd is three over six because out of six side there are three odd numbers on a die which are, remember? easy yes one three and five so three sides out of six side have odd numbers so probability is three over six so you add up the two so the probability of uh, getting two or odd number when you are rolling a die is four over six if you simplify it it will be two over three so with this uh, explanation we have completed the cases of single events uh, the part one of the syllabus so in my next video which is number two on probability I will cover combined events of probability uh, so please watch that video to get the complete concept of the probability if you have learned something from this video please like it and subscribe it and you will get automatic indication whenever I will upload my videos Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.